بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر محمد ادنان ورکنگ ایز اسسٹنٹ پروفیسر ان دا ڈپارٹمنٹ آف فزکس گوہاٹی یونیورسٹی آف سائنس اینڈ ٹیکنالوجی آئی ول ٹیچ یو دی کورس پی ایچ وائی ون زیرو تھری ویوز این آسیلیشن ٹوڈے آئی ول بی کورنگ دی سیونتھ لیکچر آف دس کورس وچ از اباؤٹ آسیلیشن اوور ویو دیز آر دی آؤٹ لائنس First, we will see what is meant by simple harmonic motion, how one can describe mathematically the object uh, performing simple harmonic motion. After that, we will see energy in simple harmonic motion. After that, we will uh, review some of the Uh, examples of the simple harmonic oscillator and at the end we will review the uniform circular motion and see the similarities between the uh, equations for the uniform circular motion and simple harmonic motion. In this course we will follow the book uh, Fundamental of Physics by Holiday, Rathnick and Walker 10th edition. All the figures in this particular presentation is taken from this book. Simple harmonic motion is a kind of periodic motion where the restoring force is proportional to the displacement. As an example, consider this mass attached to the spring placed on a frictionless surface. The equilibrium position is x is equal to 0. If one displaces this mass towards the right or towards the left, uh, this object starts uh, or sets into motion such that the displacement vector at any time periodically changes. This xm represents the maximum uh, displacement from the equilibrium position on either side and uh, this uh, XM periodically changes with the uh, frequency omega and phi represent the phase constant. The velocity vector can be obtained by differentiating the displacement with respect to time and similarly the acceleration can also be obtained by differentiating the velocity. Generally these three are known as motion parameter in classical mechanics. If we <coughs> replace this x m cos of omega t plus phi by x of t, we have this standard equation for the uh, object performing simple harmonic motion that is the acceleration is proportional to the displacement and omega represents the angular frequency. The phase constant phi track the state of motion during the dynamics. In this figure, uh, one can see the value of phi at different position at t is equal to 0. So these are the three parameters uh, with which one can describe the motion for harmonic oscillator. Now we will see the mathematical equation or the equation of motion for simple harmonic oscillator. So consider the same oscillator uh, in the form of spring uh, mass system. Now to obtain the equation of motion we will start with, with the Newton second law f is equal to ma. Now, f is equal to ma and uh, using the value of a from the previous slide uh, over here we can have this f is equal to minus kx by defining k as m omega square and also replacing this x m cos of omega t by x so we have this linear restoring 
Now, this linear storing force uh, is actually responsible for the uh, motion of the object having mass m. Now, for a one-dimensional system, this f can be converted to m m m x double dot. m x double dot represent the acceleration for a one-dimensional system as shown here. Now, rearranging this equation, m x double dot plus k x equal to zero, and defining the omega square as k over m, one can have this standard second order differential equation for simple harmonic uh, motion. Now this equation uh, is having the uh, solution xm cos of omega t plus phi. Remember this is an ideal situation where we, we, we don't have any resistive force on offer to, uh, to oppose the motion. So this is the simplest solution. So if you want to describe the motion of simple harmonic oscillator, we will be dealing with these differential equations. Now the same uh, description of the harmonic oscillator can be done with the help of the energy mechanism. So starting with the force which is responsible for the motion f is equal to minus kx, one can obtain the potential energy by integrating this force generally f is equal to minus del u by del x for a one dimensional system. So integrating one can obtain the uh, potential energy as half kx square. Similarly for the same one dimensional system one can write the kinetic energy as half mv square. So if we have x then we, one can find the x dot and then make it square so we'll be getting this expression. Now again as previously we have defined k as m omega square so these two are the expressions for the potential energy and the kinetic energy. The total energy uh, for for a system, for an ideal system, is the potential energy plus the kinetic energy. So using the above two equation, uh, one can obtain this total energy half k x m square. So it is clear that the total energy remains remains independent of time. So here one can see the energy versus time graph. So if we plot the uh, potential energy and the kinetic energy, so at any instant of time the total energy is the sum of the two energy. So either it is the sum or uh, at, at, at this particular time, for example, this green line represents the potential energy. So at this point the potential energy is zero and the total energy is equal to the kinetic energy. So at any instant of time the total energy uh, remains constant, it's just a horizontal line uh, parallel to the, the time axis. So as time changes the energy shifts between the two types such that the total energy remains constant. Similarly at, at the position changes the energy shifts between the two time and it remains constant. So uh, one can describe the harmonic oscillator with the help of this energy mechanism that is we need to find out the potential energy then we need to uh, uh, find out the kinetic energy for that system and then the total energy is the sum of the two energies. So at any instant of time one can have the energy uh, whether that is kinetic energy or the potential energy. Now we will see some of the examples of the harmonic oscillator other than the mass spring system. 
So the first one is the torsion pendulum. Torsion pendulum uh, is just a, a disc of radius r which is suspended from this suspension wire from a fixed end. Now if if this disc is rotated in this horizontal uh, plane with a rotational displacement theta then this will oscillate such that the restoring torque will be minus kappa theta. Now uh, for, for a, a linear dynamics we, we start with the equation of motion as f is equal to ma but once we are in the rotational dynamics uh, we will start with the torque. So ta torque is minus kappa theta so again this is just a restoring torque where theta represent the rotational displacement and kappa represent uh, the constant uh, which is uh, which depends upon the properties of the suspension wire uh, the properties I mean the length the diameter and the material from which it is it is made so torque can be further uh, right as can be written as I alpha where I is the moment of inertia and alpha is the rotational acceleration now rearranging this equation uh, one can obtain this equation which is similar to the mass spring system mx double dot plus kx equal to zero so instead of m we have moment of inertia instead of k the spring constant we have now the kappa which is uh, another constant in the torsion pendulum now by arranging this uh, equation now instead of xm cos of omega t we have theta equals to theta m cos of omega t plus phi theta m is now the maximum uh, rotational displacement from the uh, equilibrium position say this is the reference line uh, where the theta is equal to zero now uh, the angular frequency is now kappa over i previously we have k over m k being the spring constant m being the mass so for the rotational pendulum we will be solving these equations. Now the second example is the simple pendulum. By simple pendulum uh, I mean we have a mass which is uh, connected to this inextensible mass this string of length L. Now to find out the equation of motion we will be again working in the uh, angular dynamics the tar uh, ta is equal to r cross f generally this is the torque uh, but in this case in this uh, case the torque is the restoring torque so we have a negative sign and instead of the moment arm r we have the length l of the pendulum and instead of uh, force f we have the effective component of the force which produces this restoring torque so that is fg sine of theta at this at this point the the force due to gravity in f f of g which is equal to mg makes an angle theta such that we have two components one is fg cos theta and the other one is mg sine theta so this component is actually responsible for the restoring torque so that's why this is f f of g sine theta while the other component of the force mg is f, f of g cos theta which is uh, anti parallel to the length uh, vector so that's why this is the effective component now writing tha equal to i alpha uh, uh, and rearranging this equation mm, such that this alpha can be uh, described as the second derivative of the angular displacement that is uh, theta double dot now if theta is small then sine theta is approximately equal to theta so in the small theta approximation can have a similar 
equation as uh, I have uh, discussed on the previous slide. Theta double dot plus L m g over i times theta equal to zero. So instead of sine theta, now here we have theta the small theta approximation. Now, in this case, the angular frequency is L m g over i. And I is the moment of inertia for the system about the pivot. So generally it is m r squared, but in our case r is l, so I is equal to m l squared. So if we uh, use this definition uh, uh, over here, uh, then one can obtain the angular frequency as g over n, which is the uh, more known form. Uh, from there, one can find out the time period of the simple pendulum. Now, after uh, going through those mathematical uh, equation, the differential equation, uh, which one need to solve for describing the simple harmonic oscillator, now. We want to see the uniform circular motion and uh, would like to see is there any similarities between the equation for the uniform circular motion and simple harmonic motion. So we have this system. It shows a reference particle P prime. This is a particle P prime which is moving along this uniform circle moving in a uniform circular motion with a constant angular frequency omega in a reference circle as shown. Now the projection of this mm, P prime is P. Now this P which moves along the diameter performing simple harmonic motion. So for that to derive Consider this xm is the radius of the uh, particle which is performing this simple harmonic motion. Now at any time t, the angular position of the particle is omega t plus pi. Then this object is moving, so it covers a, a, a angular displacement. So that angular displacement is marked as omega t plus pi such that uh, this angular displacement reduces to phi only at t is equal to zero. Now, if one define the cos theta, by theta I mean the omega t, cos of omega t plus phi from this figure, so that will be base over the hypotenuse. So, defining cos theta from the figure and then rearranging this expression one can have the same expression as we have discussed in the mass spring system x x of t is equal to x m power of omega t plus phi. So the position uh, of the or we can say the projection of the particle performing simple harmonic motion uh, is similar to the one we obtained for uh, object performing simple harmonic motion. Now about the velocity, consider this figure. Now at any time t, the magnitude of the velocity vector is xm omega. Generally the velocity is v is equal to r omega. So instead of the radius r, we have radius xm. So we have xm omega. Now, its projection along the x-axis, so if this is the vector whose magnitude is o omega xm, now this vector is having two components. One is this, uh, this component, let's say this is the vertical component, the sine component, that one is the, the horizontal component. So we have the vector times cos and the vector time sign. So this is parallel to the one which is shown here. Now 
this and this is the same. So the vector times sine of the angle, these two angles are the same. Uh, so the vector magnitude is omega xm times the sine of the angle. So that is the projection along the x-axis. Now this negative sign shows that it is towards the negative x-axis or we can say that on the previous slide the, 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 that projection was uh, in the increasing direction of x so this time it is in the decreasing direction of x so that's why there is a negative sign. So the negative sign appears because the velocity components of t as shown is directed towards the left by left I mean towards the negative x. So the velocity expression uh, for the an object performing simple harmonic motion uh, is similar to the one we obtained for uh, mass spring system. Now, to find out the expression for the acceleration, uh, consider this figure at any time t again the acceleration, uh, the radial acceleration vector is having magnitude omega square xf generally the radial acceleration is r omega square so this is the magnitude of the vector makes an angle or uh, makes an angle angle omega t plus phi and the projection along this x axis is this vector so if we see that this this is the vector this is the one component and this is the other component so this component is the vector times the cos so that's why we have the vector times the cos of omega t plus phi. The negative sign uh, shows that it is again towards the center or towards the uh, decreasing direction of x. Now, uh, this acceleration is, is similar to the one we have already discussed in the uh, mass spin system. So, after reviewing, uh, the uniform circular motion, we come to this conclusion that the displacement, the velocity or the acceleration, the projection of the uniform circular motion is indeed simple harmonic motion. And with this, I thank you very much.